Welcome to the Gloves Are Off Overtime Edition. I'm Moses Bolden, and I'm pleased to be joined by these two fine gentlemen, Greg Buchanan and Matt Schumann. How are you guys doing? Hey, Moses. Yeah. Excellent. Now, we didn't get to these questions on the show, but let's talk about them now. Mark Cohan, the commissioner. I thought he's done a fantastic job in his tenure as a CFL commissioner. He says he was not going to re-up for another year. Now, looking back at his legacy and what he's tried to do, expanding the game, the revenue, etc., what is kind of his... I guess, major, at least legacy, lasting legacy that he brings uh, from his time as a commissioner? Uh, well, I think when he took those uh, games down east, and he, you know, yep. to Moncton, he brought the attention down there. Where is it, Moncton? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. Moncton. Yeah, and just wanting to expand CFL down there. And I think eventually there's going to be another team that goes down there. So, you know what he did too with the TV contract? bringing in all that money and revenue and expanding it to the U.S. market. I think he did a fantastic job with the CFL. He, but at the same time, while well, he's done that, that's a positive thing. The negative thing about it, you still have a lot of concerns about Toronto. And you say this and say, well, can the CFL survive if there's not a team in Toronto? And I say, yes, it can. Because the that's NFL, tough. In the NFL, you don't have a team in Los Angeles. And we're, it's not even, even mentioned that that's a but problem But you can't the compare the National Football League to the LA CFL. Kiss. <laughs> You can't compare but, those two, but, though. But if, 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 if you have strong franchises... And because there's multiple. In the NFL, they have multiple cities. They have a New York. Granted, we have a Vancouver. Yeah. But still, it's, it's not the same. It's apples and oranges but when you, you compare have the two. To, you have to get... A, and if the thing is, you have to have a strong uh, ownership in Toronto. You have to find a stadium that works for them. And right now, the Argos practice in a facility that is horrible. They, they, their dress rooms are trailers. That's not pro football. Guys come from the U.S. and come up here to play for the Argos, and they had better facilities at their high school team than they have in the pros, and that is embarrassing, and that's got to be fixed. All right, guys, we'll move on to the NFL. Now, uh, there's a lot of talk about, I, I, I guess you would say, uh, their commissioner, Roger Goodell, in terms of his lack of, I don't want to say depth, but really his handling of the Ray Rice situation. Uh, got a lot of flack for only giving him a two-game suspension. And you know what? He owned us up to it, saying, you know what? I did not look at this with the same seriousness as a lot of people would. So therefore, I'm going to implement a rule. And this rule states that if you get caught with a domestic abuse uh, report or what have you, the first time, the first offense is a six-game suspension. The next time that happens, it's a lifetime ban um, with some provisions that might just be one season. Uh, do you feel that Roger Goodell has done enough here to kind of say, you know what, he is sorry, apologetic, and that he's trying to rectify the situation, the bad PR situation that the NFL got themselves into? Oh, something's had to happen because it, it's story after story after story, and it's not just up to the NFL office to police this. It's up to every team to step up and say, we can't condone this anymore. This just keeps on happening. It's not Ray Rice this week. It's going to be somebody else next week. It's either marijuana or if it's uh, you know, beating up your girlfriend or your wife. This has got to stop, and it's got to stop now. And, and the only marijuana way, is a little bit of a different thing, though. But, but, you know, but, but when it comes to domestic you know, abuse, no, but when it that's, comes, yeah. that's an entirely different but, but, there, but I'm just saying there's a lot of issues of all these players in the NFL, and it seems to be coming out week after week after week after week, and yet nobody is stepping up saying, you got to lower the hammer down and say, this is not tolerated anymore. Any kind of a domestic de assault won't be tolerated anymore. The NFL has to lay down the hammer or else this is going to keep on going on. Yeah, I don't see this issue with, the, with weapons or domestic or marijuana. It's never going to end, I guess. I don't know if you want to say you took a pro but the right direction. Oh, but you, you know what? Well, we, it, but there's also a code of conduct. Much like any other job, you have to conduct yourself in a certain way. There's a professionalism, even in our profession, that we have to do. We can't go out there doing, you know, uh, getting caught with DUIs, marijuana possession, you name it. If we did that, you know, of any other job, you would get fired no. or yeah. you'd serve a yeah. severe suspension. So there's a lot, there's more of a, a leeway, it seemed like, with the National Football League, if you're a pro athlete in general, that there was a little more leeway. Now I feel that, you know what, they're on the right track when it comes to the, the domestic aspect of this. Um, that, and it doesn't involve just players. It's any personnel that are involved with the National Football League altogether. I think these are code and conduct rules that should apply to all. Well, it should, yeah. And, and the thing is, but they have to be stricter on it. And, the, and if you're a first-time offender, second-time offender, 
it's got to be a difference. First time offender, you're going to get a few games. Second time offender, you have to be suspended indefinitely and then reviewed after that. I, that's just my opinion. All right, guys. Well, I do want to say thank you for joining us on this OT edition. Thank you guys as well as the viewers. We do appreciate you coming, uh, at least checking us out. Uh, if you don't watch us here, you could also check us out on CITL every Tuesday, 730. Make sure you tune on the TVs and watch us there. Come back to our Facebook page for the questions we didn't really get to and watch us blabble on, on, and on, and on. <laughs> for myself, Greg Buchanan, and every guest that comes on Gloves, we appreciate you coming on. We'll see you in seven days.